Good luck. Perfect. So, let me select uh, what opening do I want to play today? Um, yeah, let's let's stick with this. Offering the Bishop Exchange and then transitioning into Cheerful Central Rook. This should be good fun. Um, they've immediately closed the diagonal. This gives me less incentive to pers... Uh, well? Do we have some fun this game? This is me playing the game, so... Uh, man, I really want to push that. Hmm. How about this one? Yeah, let's push this. Let's see where we end up. Yeah, I tried... Oh, sorry, I put the room in not emote-only mode. Now we're in emote-only mode. Oops. Alright. So, yeah, I predicted we get this Eifrebisha double-swinging rook opening. And in this subclass of opening, third file is superior to fourth file. So we're going to take a break from our normal uh, central file rook madness to try to win this game right in the opening. Because um, why not, right? I've been the victim of this position before. Surely I can be the one uh, prosecuting an advantage in it. So, I think last time I did this, uh, or last time my weakness was that when this pawn pushed, and then the bishop moved over here, I immediately was at risk of losing the knight, because there's no general on this square. So if the knight blocks the check, it's a problem. So I think this immediately obtains an advantage, or at least puts... Tremendous pressure on the king. I think. I could have something wrong there. Um, yeah, so this... this. Tr I mean, there is a castle. You put both golds next to each other up here. But that's not the castle that everybody wants to play. And now I've got a pawn in hand. So let's continue castling before similar destruction comes my way. Um, just keep moving. All right. So let's see. put our golds together. Yeah, I don't know that this actually does anything. It looks nice, but... Um, well, this edge pawn move is not... Well, this will give my bishop somewhere to go someday. Um, mm, it's tricky. Yeah, let's push this. It doesn't put any pressure directly on the king. However, every push somewhere near the king will add some small amount of pressure. And eventually that'll add up to something useful. In the interim, let's just keep pushing everything on this half of the board and see if my opponent opens the diagonal allowing my silver to climb up or if they're just going to keep this closed forever. Um... And if they do, I'll just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. So, yeah. All right, they've switched to third file. Like I was saying, third file is superior to fourth file in this uh, structure. So it's a sensible change. Um, so now I'm debating 
uh, eventually I'm going to push this and start dropping some pawns on the second file. Uh, do I make any big moves before I do that? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, bishop five five. They just push the center pawn, so that's not a great move. Um. Could push my center pawn to at least dominate the 5-5 five five square and make room for my silver to climb. Oh, this does block my rook. That's why I didn't do it earlier. That's why doing it now is somewhat questionable. But if there were any time to push the pawn, now is the best time to do it. So let's push it once more. All right. I'm still not seeing a problem. So I could try to plug this file. Are they seriously considering trading rooks here? No, I didn't think so. Um, so yes, I could kick the silver, and it would feel good if I did that. Would it help me in any way? No, not really. Um... I mean, they are threatening to drop a pawn right here, but I can take it. Silver takes, silver takes, knight takes, pawn dropping. Okay, yeah, kicking the silver makes sense. Um, all right, fine. Let's kick this. So... They cleared their pawn off the third file to get into a similar position as what I'm in. Um, yeah, let's put my silver closer to somewhere useful. Um, I've not quite decided where I'm putting my silver. They did wait until I moved the silver to move their fourth file pawn. So they're exploiting this pin on the longest diagonal. Um, so we're just going to protect the bishop here and maybe reroute it somewhere. Maybe I'm going to put all my pressure on the second file right now. Um, that's okay. Yeah, they waited until I blocked my rook, so I can't push this pawn anymore. Um, interesting. This is getting complicated in a hurry. Um, let's try to put my silver to decent use. So it's now fighting off whatever threat there is to push this pawn directly. And maybe in some way I'm threatening to push my center pawn, but I don't really want to right now. Um... I'm so confused. <sighs> I am so confused what my opponent is doing. My silver is not great where it's at. I'm debating advancing it again, but if I do push it forward, that limits where it can go. But it can't jump over my bishop to get toward the king here. 
I might have messed up by pushing the bishop before moving my silver. My silver might belong in front of my rook here. So attacking could be complicated because I've made it difficult for myself. Um, on the other hand, if they do move the rook over, then I can pawn drop here again. And then threaten rook takes silver. So there is some merit to what I've done. I'm just not super happy about it. So, yeah, instead we're just going to put pressure with our knight. I'm not exactly sure where. All right, so... I'm not sure why they did this dance. Like... Okay, yes, now the silver attacks this square. But what's your point? Always have a purpose. Um, yeah, I don't understand. I might just push my edge file pawn, because I'm not seeing anything here. Oh, maybe their intent is to push on the second file, but that's really slow. Hmm. I guess we'll clamp down this edge pawn before doing anything too drastic. All right, so now they do control more squares than they used to. Um... I don't think this is going to end the way they think it will. So I could just drop my silver back right now, and probably should. Because their next move is going to be pawn drop here. Pawn takes, silver takes, and then I push my pawn to hit this knight, and I win the knight. And they pawn drop here, and actually I'm not winning a knight. Okay. I see. It's not so simple. Um, hmm. So, silver back, pawn drop. I don't know what happens after that. Uh, okay, uh, what else can I try? I'm not sure. I have not made things easy for myself. Yeah, okay, fine. We'll defend it this way. I'm not happy about it, but it is a defense. Potentially, after pawns exchange, I pawn drop on the rook's head. And I guess if the bishop takes, the rook is no longer supporting the silver. Um, and if the rook takes, I just open the diagonal and fun stuff happens.
So, yeah, let's play this out. They have one, two, three attacking this square. Let's reduce that number by one if we can. And so now the dilemma is that they want to push through on this file, but they also don't want to give up a rook. So we'll see how this resolves. Um, they might start this with just a pawn drop. Well, even that's pretty risky. Yeah, so bishop takes... But now I have this tempo. Right. So I don't think this is how they pictured it. So now if the silver moves away, my knight can flee. Right. See, they're trying to promote. Um, I guess that's fine. I have a knight. Let's use a knight. If they drop the knight, I want that rook. So depending where that knight goes, I might just take the rook. So yeah, tactics be complicated, man. All right, so is this a safe place for the rook? Hmm, what am I attacking now? What are they attacking now? I don't know. Taking this gold looks very tempting. I just want to see if I have a better move before I play the good move. I mean, this is clearly the best move. Let's play it. And then let's hit this rook over here with the point that I'd like my rook to defend across the rank, but can't do that because my bishop's in the way, and my bishop can't do anything useful because this diagonal is blocked. Let's fix all of these problems at once. Yep, we're in check. Gotta do something about being in check. Um, I guess I move to the right one. I guess that's the safest place to go. At least if I'm trying not to get... Like, assuming somehow that they get a gold, or even a silver, things could go terribly wrong if I put my king on the wrong square. Like, if I put it on 7-1 uh, here, there's a real chance that somehow my silver moves away and they take it and they silver drop and it's mate. Um, so yeah, we're going to run this way because it looks safest. Is it safest? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not totally sure. Um, well, I can attack this rook and the bishop at the same time. But I should aim toward the king, is what I know. So before things get too crazy, let's pursue the king first. OK. 
Okay, so we've deflected this. It's no longer next to the king. And now let's try to pick up the rook again. If the rook moves, maybe I just take the knight. I don't really like this knight right next to my king. I kind of like the silver where it's at now. It's actually useful in defense. Um, I guess because I'm slightly panicking with this lance and pawn just rifling straight down toward my king. But yeah, my main idea is just take the bishop and then move my bishop out of the way so my rook defend or can hit this knight. My rook is kind of happy here, but would be happier closer to the opponent's king. Yeah, I probably should have just done bishop takes lance, threatening to take this knight. Or even bishop up here to 2-2. Two, two. I like taking the lance because I'm afraid of this pressure on the edge file. I really did not need this bishop at all. It's not helping me. And a bishop in defense might be useful, but maybe not. Um, I think they're considering exchanging rooks here, because this position is so awkward. Okay. Um, well, this gives me another tempo. The tempo is even better than uh, just straight up taking a piece or winning an exchange. Yeah, this horse, if it can force this rook to move away, is going to be a champion. So they can continue defending this knight, and I might take it anyway. Um... Okay, so they moved the rook to a safe place for right now. Now the rook is no longer safe. They have to find another place to move it. Incidentally, this pawn was the only thing defending the bishop. So this is a fork. Right. Um, now just because the bishop's defended doesn't mean that like it's safe. But more important than winning a bishop here is activating my rook and trying to snipe my opponent's king. Um, and securing my own king. Um, but they can plug this center file so easily. So I probably should just take the bishop. Taking the bishop makes my king more safe. We're going to take it. So now I control this square on the edge file. So uh, I'm feeling a little bit safer now. But also a lot happier being up a whole bishop. Because um, I can use a bishop. It could go like on this diagonal, hitting the rook and the gold behind the rook. Um, I'm still attacking this knight here. The other knight cannot defend this knight. Maybe a pawn could defend the knight, but then I just take the pawn and I'm hitting the rook. But then I've given up the edge file. So, yeah, I don't know. I wish there was some kind of clear attack against this king here. Uh, bring a much needed conclusion to um, this kind of desperate thing that I've launched that hasn't gone anywhere for the last so many moves. Oh, well, speak of the devil. <laughs> That's some pleasant resolution right there. Yes, please. Would you like to exchange rooks? All right. Have I got a deal for you? Alright, so the reason the rook exchange is so nice is because my rook from the head is so useless, but from the side, a dragon? Combined with, like, 
all this other stuff I can start throwing at the castle from the side? This is amazing. Um, yeah, let's celebrate it. <laughs> uh, okay. So, bearing in mind that the king is the target, let's shoot this. They can do. Oh! I did not even see that that was an Ifu. Um, I'll take it. I think this game was trending in a favorable, favorable direction anyway. But wow. Uh, that was exciting. Uh, oh, the interface called it. <laughs> uh, I would have played the same mistake. Oh, dear. Oh, wow. Well, that's embarrassing. I would have done the same thing, really. It's such a necessary defensive move, and it just doesn't work at all here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Which kind of makes my... Uh, rook drop on 2-2 two, two, or 8-8 eight, eight, even more mer mercurial than it was already. Um, just like this sudden brilliance. Yeah. Uh, I've actually been in a similar attacking position here in several games. I forget against which opponent, but they pointed out to me like how difficult these attacks can be. Um... Uh, yeah, I saw it about a move or two earlier, um, yeah, without this, um, the position is quite difficult, or complex, uh, I'm not really sure, I, like, maybe somehow it's fine, but I would not bet the entire game on whether or not that's... Well, I kind of did. But since I had the pawn drop, I didn't have to go into that big mess. Uh, I think this was better. Oh, yeah. However the game continued... Yeah. I think so. Uh, that is a good square for the bishop. Um, I forget exactly. Oh yeah, he moved his bishop elsewhere and I knight dropped him and it all pretty much went to shit from there. Um, uh, let's see. I should try to find my next move here. So, some of my moves until here have been forced, but here I wonder what to do. Um, there's gotta be something. Like, this bishop occupies a square I'd love to use. Um... My attack still feels like it's somewhat faster, but that's nothing concrete. I only have a knight in hand, so attacking could be complicated. Um, hmm. <laughs> Uh, there must uh, be somewhere I can use my knight. But where? Oh, where can it go? I mean, if I kick the bishop, that's complicated. Uh, oh, well... I I think the problem here is you just take this, right? Uh, maybe. 
Yeah, I guess Yapon takes um Yeah, this looks a bit spooky. I mean, yeah, maybe it's fine. Maybe it's okay, but this looks complicated. Um, all right, pawn takes. So silver, silver, bishop, gold, rook. Okay, yeah, I can't just trade everything. Um, wow. All right, I guess we have to consume this. Just taking it one move at a time here. Um, this is interesting too. Silver, silver, rook, silver, drop something. Um, hmm. Uh, let's see. I really want to sack on this knight, um, but it seems a bit slow. So instead of sacking, like, the entire kitchen sink, let's put this somewhere safe. We're still threatening to silver takes knight and then every pawn drop ever on 7-4. Uh, so, oh right, that's attacking the bishop. Wow. Okay, this is getting complicated. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe it is complicated. Oh, well, against this, can't we just start sacking the kitchen sink? Yeah, I mean, this looks like it's got to be something, right? Oh, okay. So we put another piece defending this. Um, I guess we'll take. Put another piece attacking it. You can't use a pawn. You gotta put another general in line. It's just a lawnmower, right? You just keeps mowing down whatever piece you used to defend this. I just keep dropping every pawn ever. I mean, this might be unsound, but it looks fun. Uh, you lost your ladder game because you had your audio settings mis- Oh, no. Jeez. That's a painful way to lose. Um... Ooh. <laughs> oh, this is delightful, isn't it? Um Does he want me to respond to this move? I wonder.
I guess he's waiting for me to respond to it. Um, okay. I'm still trying to figure out, like, what's exactly the right response, but... Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm not so sure that you can make it out of this one. <laughs> but I play a lot of crazy attacking stuff. So um wait. Okay. It's a rook drop. Guess I'll take the rook. I don't think that's where he meant to put the rook. <laughs> uh I guess we'll go back one. Um Yeah, there we go. That rook drop. That's the one. Uh so Yeah, from here I wonder. We'll just continue surrounding the king. Uh oh. Well, that's a check. Kind of do have to respond to a check. Oh. Whoops. Uh does this editor let me double checkmate? All right, fine. <laughs> All right, so I do have to respond to this. Um, I liked my double checkmate. Oh, this knight is so sad. Mm. Yeah, you have to try something like this. And just hope that you survive it. Um, is this playable? Oh. Well, that is an issue, isn't it? All right, fine. So that mates. So, okay. So that make, takes precedence over my kamikaze stuff. Yeah, so how far back do I have to go? Um, I guess I have to try this. Yeah, fair enough. That's too bad. Thought I had something. It would have been so nice to have something here. Yeah. Oh, well, but the silver doesn't do any... Well, it does kind of trap the king, but still. Um, yeah, this position looks difficult. Uh, like, uh, both kings are in danger, which is kind of thematic. I can't really tell which king's in more danger here. I probably should be able to tell, but it's... Shogi's complicated. Um, that's my explanation for everything. Shogi is always complicated. 
Oh, right. The, well, the pawn drop's illegal, but still. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, so probably I sacrificed way too much back here. So I tried to do this. Um, is there some easier way to do this, maybe? Oh, well, yeah, I guess that's an improvement. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. That does blockade the bishop, as he points out. Um, yeah, and then you do this sack like you would in all the other lines. Um, right, they do that so they avoid a fork. And then we do this anyway. So their unwillingness to exchange bishops leads to this fun position. Um, where we get at least one general, maybe two. Yeah. Yeah, I've been on the receiving end of this one, so you have some sense of how it goes. And this is why he put two generals and the knight all defending this point, so I can't, like, easily do the same thing to him. But, yeah. What was the point? How did we even get here, I wonder? Oh, he was asking if some idea made sense uh, in terms of where he puts his bishop. And somehow we ended up switching sides on who's playing which side of this position. Uh, so I was trying to demonstrate some kind of a attacking technique. Um, eventually we'll go back up the stack and see uh, where it is that uh, Gota needs to improve here. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, entirely understandable. Not everybody has all day to analyze. I certainly don't. Um, have a nice day, etc. Alright, so we'll get to do the rest of the analysis with the big board then. I'm sure none of you object. So we go back up the stack. I was trying to demonstrate that somehow... Um, there was something effective that I could do. Oh, I was pointing out that bishop 5 5 is very strong, and therefore this pawn advance might not be the best idea here. I did ask him for an idea, but then we have subsequently refuted the idea that I asked him for. So how rude of it was how rude was it of me to ask him for an idea than to just go refute it? I don't know. Um, so, yeah, after I'd asked, uh, it did occur to me, like, we have other candidate moves. We've got one here. I was thinking maybe about this at some point, um, with the idea that I'd like to push this. Um, I don't know if that works. Like, if I move the rook left one, and then threaten to push and threaten to drop the knight, like, is he just going to build Yagara on me all of a sudden or something? I don't know. It's disappointing that I don't have a pawn in hand. A pawn in hand would make this easier for me to, I don't know, to breathe easily about it. I Just knowing that at any time I could put a pawn on the same file as their king um, would make this easier for me to reason about. 
Um, yeah, we could start with this. And then if they do that, we could do this. And I don't know how they defend it. I mean, this is a possibility, but this is what we have the knight for, right? And yeah, it does not look so easy to defend. But they can attack while I'm doing all this stuff, so um, they don't need to sit idly by. Or they could just choose not to defend the pawn and know that they could just play this here or later. So I need to play this before taking the pawn, but then as soon as I put the knight down, they push this pawn to hit it. I don't know. But ideally, they'd want their bishop on the same line as my king. They're not quite getting that. Um, there's got to be some way to continue their attack. Maybe this is something best left for the engines to analyze, because I'm out of ideas. I was out of ideas five moves ago, and I'm still out of ideas. Like, the only idea I have is this sort of thing, which takes an eternity, especially considering that earlier in the game they played Rook uh, from fourth file to third file, and need to spend another tempo to move it over to the second file, where it might just be a target. So, yeah, it's not so easy for them. They have pawns on almost every file, so having four pawns in hand is not the ideal situation here. Um, maybe a bishop exchange could have helped them at some point. Uh, but yeah. All right, we have a suggestion. Now let's go refute the suggestion, because we were fishing for suggestions. Now let's go refute them. Yeah, that's so rude of me, isn't it? No. But this is why we analyze, is to go find stuff. Um, yeah, I don't understand this position. Okay. So we're going to hit with a pawn. We got a lot of pawns, so it makes sense to use them. Um, is this a terrible idea? Don't know. I do not know. To quote the movie Hercules. Yeah, this... They say if you have four pieces attacking, your attack never runs out. I'm not counting four. It's not easy. Knight five six. So they're saying knight right here. Boop. Maybe some. D oh, that's not five six. That's 5-4. Alright, 5-6, right over here. Uh, just kidding. Uh, also, four, oh my god, there's a fork on 3-6. How long has that been there? When did I give the... Okay. Here's the knight. There's the knight. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, okay. Oops. Let's put the big board on for all our spectators. Yeah, that's... I would be happy with this way of attacking, because it wins material. Because at the end of the day, that's all we're counting, is who gets the most material. I mean... I mean, technically the knight's pinned. But let's ignore that little detail for now. Um, so, yeah, pawn drop to hit the rook. Yeah, or the silver moves, whatever. Everything's hanging. Yeah, none of it matters. Yeah. Yeah, that's that works. So we need to back up and see that I have not busted this idea yet. Yeah, that knight is spooky. Like, what the heck? So, 
that would have radically changed things if they found this move and then the sacrifice if I actually stepped into this fork. Which means I can't put the Rook on this file after all. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What with Halloween coming at all? Hopefully that's a reasonable impression. Alright, we have comments in the game chat, so I'm going to make the board so none of you guys can see the board. Alright. I'm going to make the board all tiny. Nobody will ever be able to see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even if the rook isn't there. Yeah, no, it makes sense. So, yeah, bishop here. Good move. Really powerful move. Um, refutes my entire game plan. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, all hope is lost. Etc, etc. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. So I did all this just to win a knight. Oh. So, in the game... I resolved against playing this because I was afraid that a silver exchange could imperil my king. What I was not thinking about is that there is a benefit to exchanging silvers here. That is definitely a benefit, especially as I'm also threatening this. Okay, so yeah, I was too chicken to exchange silvers here, and it could have cost me the game. So instead, this is probably a better way to play it. Um, whether or not the knight escapes, whether or not we end up winning an exchange and then another exchange, etc., and things turn out like the game. Um, yeah, that silver exchange would have saved my butt. Uh, so probably should have played that. Um, Whereas here in the game, um, with the silver still on 7-4, I can't exactly play knight takes pawn. Or maybe I have to. Maybe I have to give back the material. Yeah, so. Let's see, what's the next comment? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has silver 4-5. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. Well, does he? You're talking here? Is this your idea? <laughs> ah. Alright, that's fine. Yeah, spooky nights. Spooky nights everywhere. Alright, I think um, before we make further errors in this post-game analysis, might be a good time to make one last pass through the game. So, yeah, um, the other interesting point I had here was, uh, so I played, I offered a bishop exchange, they declined it, and consequently I got to play this. I had a previous game against Destiny where I also did this, and it turned out pretty interestingly. He still won the game, but it was an exciting game. No, I'm not accepting comments through 81 Dojo right now. Sorry. Um, if you want to chat with me, we're going to chat in this channel, not in 81 Dojo. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, this is interesting how I got this third file uh, rook in. Um, and because they had this, defended this pawn, uh, there wasn't really any need for me to do this exchange immediately. I probably shouldn't have done that. This pawn is very useful where it is. I got impatient. Yeah, uh, what? Uh, oh, did I miss something? Did I seriously? So I played my king up, but we're saying like this is decisive? Is that what we're saying? Is my memory that bad? Yes. Oh my god. Yeah, I've been here before, so... Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. 
Okay, well, we're not going to make errors in the post-game analysis anymore. <laughs> Because there's nothing left to analyze. This is... I've been in this position before from the other side of the board. I can't rotate the board, but you'll have to believe me. I've played this sort of thing as Sentai before. Walking straight into this. Um, yeah, there's... I'm sure there's some theory on all of this. Um, I'm not going to imperil, like... I don't know. I could play this and we could see how far I get trying to guess what the Joseki moves are. I'm guessing it's bishop takes bishop and then a bishop 5-5 five five again, but I'm probably messing that up. In any event, um, yeah, this is not the safest thing ever for Senta. I guess we'll read the chat because my spectators know way more about this than I know. Um, yeah. Yeah, Gota's closer to attacking the king, because the king is one step closer to the corner. But apparently pushing this pawn might be a playable thing. Why don't we just take Migi Gyoku and move it to the left side? Yeah. Truly a question for the ages. Right, ne right up there next to asking what is Migi Gyoku. I'm only half joking. That's like the right hand fourth foul rook king center whatever the heck that is. The thing Kektar plays. That super special uh, king formation that we could spend days studying. Um, so yeah, I push the center pawn again like I'm an idiot. That's my excuse. I'm sticking with it. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Shogi's hard. Shogi remains hard, even in 2020. So, yeah, there's tons of ways I could burn a tempo here. Um, but the one I picked, I'm not too happy with. I'm probably happier with uh, pushing this edge foul pawn again. Just waiting once more to see if my opponent can actually plan something. Um, and they probably can, and I'm going to be sad after they do plan it, but... Yeah, I don't know. Putting the pawn back on this file might not be the worst thing ever to prevent um, Yagra from accidentally forming when the rook moves away. Um, we have another comment. What if you went for first file? What if I went for 10th file? What if I went for like 88th file? I don't know. Uh, a lot of things could happen. Yeah, so I was saying, yeah, I could push this. It's complicated. I'm waiting for them to move, and I just don't know any of the answers. Yeah. Fifth line shoulder. Sure. Whatever he said. So let's take a look at the rest of the game. Oh, we missed a comment. Oh, that's just me jumping back through the moves to make that clicking noise. So I attempt to shut this attack down. I've always been wary of putting the pawn here. But allowing the opponent to place a pawn here maybe was the right thing to do. Maybe again, like... I'm just a chicken, and there's no reason for me to be so chicken here. They don't have a pawn. They have a silver, not a pawn. And I can place a pawn, and everything's fine. And they don't have a pawn. Someday they'll get a pawn if I give them one. But right now it's okay. And I could even put a pawn in front of the knight instead of behind it if I'm feeling adventurous. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. But we missed a little fork there, so yeah, never mind. Um, everything went according to plan, then. <laughs> uh, or, uh, at least I need to be wary of this silver fork, so I have to step right into this mess. Which is not pleasant at all. 
um, might be playable, but my king is so much more vulnerable than my opponent's king. Um, so, yeah, this is playing with fire. I know I like playing with fire in general, but here there's really no reason to do it. I'm not that desperate to win a pawn, because I have nowhere to put it. So, yeah, I think what I did in the game was fine. Um, yeah, so when I split my bishop and my silver, that's finally when he offers to open the diagonal. So, oh, really? Now? A remove ago. Well, I can't do that here. So, yeah. Probably, sh uh, my comment that I was going to make is that I could do this and just wait and see, do they have some critical, super special idea of how, how to continue attacking? And probably their best waiting move is this. And then I really don't have more waiting moves. I have to like play something like this. And now they can consider opening the diagonal again. So, yeah, I I really don't win this tempo at all. Um, but it worked out okay in the game. Uh, yeah, I think the problem with doing this, though, is that it's not a legal move. But uh, in general, that's a good observation that would help uh, threatening to move the central pawn. But, yeah, this is a... Oh, before... Oh, a move a move ago. This thing. Okay. Hmm. Damn. Well, why am I the one playing this game? My spectators know all the moves already. What the heck? <laughs> Uh okay. Well, uh, yeah, this is the teaching ladder, where not only do I miss the moves during the game, but even during the post-game analysis, I come up with the wrong ideas. So, yeah, it's important to keep an open mind. Okay, huh. Well, that's embarrassing. Yeah. That definitely is a good timing for it. Um, hmm. I don't even have any cheap nonsense to play against this. Okay. Well, I'll have to keep that in mind next time I see this. Uh, aiming at my king. And my opponents played this kind of castle. Yeah, this makes sense. And because this makes so much sense... Um, that means that my opponent's push is mistimed. Um, and better for them would have been just sucking it up and playing this. And now that shot is no more. Um, um, yeah, whatever. That's only a silver. I don't know. Gotta have some fun somehow. Yeah, I guess this is still complicated, but um, definitely seems to favor uh, Gota. That's amazing. That's a nice move. Um, yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, this is just a very difficult position. How did they get here? How do you manage to get a position so difficult to play? I guess you commit wholesale to this tactic. Never move the rook. Play this castle and just never move any of your pieces. And try to attack with most of your pieces locked in place. 
So you can really only push these fourth and third foul pawns and the silver, and that's about it. It's a bit difficult to attack without your pieces. So I guess that's why their silver ended up in such a strange spot and why none of the attacking ideas instantly prevail. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, supposing this kind of attack did work, we would see it a lot more. Like, yeah, third file rook is definitely a real thing in shogi. Um, but... Mm. We're playing I for Ibisha, where we're both castling our king to the right and the rook to the left. This might not be the best time to play, I don't know, whatever this is. How did they manage? To, how does my attack happen to be so much faster than theirs? So when I played this, my idea is that I really wanted to cover this 5 5 square. Um, and the reason I wanted to cover that is so that I didn't get mated by bishop 5-5 five five and a knight drop in the end game. So, yeah, I guess in this configuration they have to play for the edge foul. I guess so. It's difficult even looking at it, but I guess that's necessary. Um... So, yeah, we got to that position through some inaccurate move order on both players' parts. I was questioning my sanity, wondering why opening this file and playing bishop 5-5 five five didn't win. It's because I opened the file one move too late. Um, so, instead we got this strangeness. But what else is strange here? So... Yeah, they offer to open the diagonal on their terms. And then they push this edge pawn, which I guess maybe threatens to put the bishop over there. Maybe not. Maybe threatens to use it for the knight. Maybe just trying to prevent me from doing my own edge file attack right next to my king. Or maybe it's just a way to mark time. But I don't think marking time is, I don't know, the best idea in this opening. Yeah, they need to... Oh! Oh, that's how you play an edge file attack. Every time I try to do it, it never works. But yeah, all you need to do... Move the bishop out of the way. And put the rook behind the lance. And you have a surprise edge file attack. Okay. I probably should see that coming. And further, like, playing king 8-2 like I did, it's probably very inadvisable. Like, probably my king should still be on 7-1 or something. And save king 8-2 for later. Um, just given how passive some of this has been until now. So, yeah. Uh, that's how you attack. And the game, so we looked at the critical moments in the game and saw how it just escalated. Um, yeah, these were fun moments. Uh, I think our opponent has a math project or something they have to work on, so... Um, yeah, just tactic after tactic after tactic, all landing exactly where they need to. It was uh, kind of convenient. Um, the only thing maybe I could have done better here is maybe I do exchange bishops. Um, I don't know. Because even though I had a horse, it's not in the best possible place. But, I mean, I'm nitpicking at this point. Like, I'm winning a bishop one way or another. In fact, no, I was thinking rook takes bishop and I... I Somehow my silver was not defending the horse. Yes, it is. Of course the silver is defending the horse, but yeah. Anyway, this escalated. I offered a rook exchange because this is a strong counterattack. Um, and I guess they hadn't planned to, like, 
put the pawn in a way that would force them to Nifu. Um, I wish I could take credit for seeing that, because that's really, really smart. But, um, no, I can't take credit for something like that, not honestly. So, yeah, the defending and attacking move, huh. Well, we don't, we might or might not want to put the rook on the same line as the horse here, but here it hits something. And so let's say he just did that or something similar to waste a move so that this is actually legal here. What I was considering next is just attacking. And so the threat is here and the threat is there. Here a threat, there a threat, everywhere a threat. Old MacDonald had a farm of threats. I mean, oh yeah, I guess we could save the knight. Saving the knight might not be a bad thing to do. Um, but at this point, if they're going to invest an entire move taking the rook away from my king, I think I'm okay with that. Especially because the knight cannot defend across the bottom two ranks. That's one thing I've learned about knights, is that they only defend from your third rank up the board. They don't actually defend your bottom two ranks. You can put them in the bottom two ranks, they just won't defend anything. They'll just occupy it to prevent pieces from being dropped on those squares. Um, yeah, yeah, it has some merit. You can have this check, sure. And then, uh, well, I guess I can't take it that way. I take it here. And, yeah. I think I'm still fine. Some caution is advised, but this position, uh, this is what I was envisioning the end of the game kind of looking like. Yeah, you gotta be careful about those traps. Um, so practice your sume. Uh, I've got um, Katagami's book about sume, about which pieces do you need to checkmate. And I don't know whether it's targeted at players traditionally at this rating number. I don't know. Uh, I have to read it. But my strength does not come from my endgame ability. So, uh, yeah, I have more work to do. Um, so, yeah, it's been an interesting game. Um... I think my last second audible of when I was choosing, you know, maybe instead of playing um, the central rook, let's just play a third foul rook thing. That audible seems to have worked extremely well here. Um, and I've been on the receiving end of this in a different teaching ladder game, and I should know better by now. Um, <laughs> especially here. <laughs> Like, I signaled, I telegraphed that intent, and they walk straight into it. And this is the trap, so I should know that by now. But overall, yeah, very sharp game. Accidental Nifu at the end, that's unfortunate. But, um, yeah, even so, I think my attack uh, carried over resounding success um, in spite of my lack of reading. So, sometimes you get lucky, um, but it's good to, like, have a plan just in case you don't get lucky, or in case you do and you need to recognize that you actually did get lucky. Like, here I recognize that my rook is useful. Earlier I did recognize, like, fork after fork after fork. Um, where was it that I mentioned started mentioning attacking the king really early, but it didn't become such a focal point. Yeah, like here I'm attacking everything but the king, and the reason I'm doing that is to try to save my own king, which is being harassed by this rook. This rook is doing such harassment, and then here I was ready to just attack the rook again, and just continue attacking, and if he goes back again, um, oh, this actually does not defend diagonally, does it? But, yeah, I take the bishop and just keep hitting the rook over and over. 
taking away all these pieces that could be used to attack my king. Um, and it's my fault that earlier I missed tactics, which allowed this knight to be here in the first place. Uh, so, yeah, I kept mentioning attacking the king. Um, yeah, I spotted this. This was necessary. In some sense of just needing to upset my opponent's rhythm. Yeah, this... Um, yeah, after I had missed that exchanging silvers could be such a strong idea, somewhere around here, maybe this one, maybe the other is silver. One of these, if I exchange them for this, then I suddenly have this threat on 6-9. Um, I should learn to recognize this sort of thing. Uh, but having missed that, yeah, it was necessary for me to attack before... Well, my opponent just let me do it. Uh, after they played this, I was somewhat concerned about this promotion. Because then the bishop can come back and start trying to defend an attack. But that's one, two, three moves to greatly improve the bishop. And using those three moves, I can do a lot of stuff. Um. Oh, Masahiko. Unfortunately, these are only available in print, so you'd have to order them from Japan or from Nikamoto. I see. Interesting. Yeah. Oh. Oh. What do I say? <laughs> How can I respond? Uh. Yeah. I do like my dead trees. Uh, having paperback books can be a really nice thing, or hardcover or whatever, but having physical books can be quite nice in print. Um, but we saw, like, a couple months ago, I shared my training box of stuff I bought from the internet. I have, want to get through that, and that includes some chess books, too. Uh, but yeah, I should at least consider this. Um, although, it feels wasteful having them ship something all the way across the ocean just for me. Like, I don't know, just something feels awful about that. If I could purchase it printed somewhere outside, like, or they don't have to, like, send a boat or a plane or something like that, I could maybe accept that. I would feel awful. Just... I don't know. Maybe I'm stupid like that. Anyway, yeah, we found a lot of good attacking moves this game. So, uh, yeah, teaching ladder's a great opportunity. It was good to have so many spectators pointing out ideas throughout this game, or throughout the post-game analysis. There were no comments during the game, of course, other than I forgot to put emotes only on for the first move or so. But, uh, yeah, it was great having spectators. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Thanks for this post-game analysis, and thanks to my opponent for the game.